the college football experience. New Mexico State Aggies 2022 season preview episode on the Sports Gambling Podcast Network, presented by WinBet. Bet fifty dollars at WinBet, get two hundred dollars in free bets. Bet big, win bigger with WinBet. Head over to sportsgamblingpodcast.com/slash WinBet. That's sportsgamblingpodcast.com/slash W Y N N B E T to claim your free bets today. We're also brought to you by IP Vanish. Yes, IP Vanish is the official VPN of SGPN, and they're offering seventy percent off if you go to ipvanish.com slash SGP. That's ipvanish.com slash SGP. We're also brought to you by SGPN Discord. Yes, make sure you check out our SGPN Discord server, the perfect place to interact and sweat out bets with the entire SGPN crew. So just go to sportsgamblingpodcast.com. Slash Discord. This is Mike Leach, uh, head football coach at Mississippi State, and you're listening to SGPN Let It Ride. Yes. Woo-wee. Welcome. Welcome to the college football experience. New Mexico state style. My name is Colby swinging database dad, AKA pick Dundee. That's not a pick. This is a pick. When Dundee happened, he was a superstar. I smoke and I drink and um, I don't have stress and I'm healthy. <laughs> You know, I love this mascot, the best mascot in college football. We are here to preview the 2022 New Mexico State Aggies. The be- by far the best, by far the best mascot, if you ask me. I am joined by my co host. Give it up for the burrito eating, sideline kiss stealing, wheeling a dealing, Patty C in the place to be. Hi, up. <laughs> How you doing? What's up, buddy? Huh? How you doing, pal? I'm doing great, brother. Life is good. We're talking Aggie football. I mean, an Aggie. That's usually like an agricultural worker of sorts or something. Not this one. This is a bandito. This guy will come guns blazing. It's a cowboy, a bandit. He's got he's got the little mask on. Like uh, he's fantastic. He's got that sweet ass Burt Reynolds mustache. No oh, man, Just I mean he's ready to mow you down. Absolutely doing it, Patty C. And let me tell you, buddy. Let me let's just let's cut the nonsense. All right. Uh, I think this is relevant for this one. Uh, I think tide turning. I see. As I remember, I was raised in the desert, but tides kind of turn. It's easy to see a tide turn. Yes. Facts. Uh, did I say those words? <laughs> yes. I'm gonna say those words because. This is the New Mexico State Aggies. Yes. Yes, Patty C. And they they look it's a rich program. They got a national championship back in 1960. 11 and 0. Boom. Give them that natty. What was that? The uh Border Intercollegiate Athletic Association. It was. And they dominated. Yeah, look, with the, the likes of Arizona State in their conference, that's what I'm undefeated saying. Undefeated season, and you go back to 1923. They got another national championship. <laughs> All right, then Patty, so you go to 1913. Guess what? They got another national championship. This is a legendary program. You go back to 1911. They got another national championship. Same with 1907, 1906, 1905. This is what you call a blue blood. Even 1894, they were undefeated that year too. All sure, right. they were one and oh. Two and oh. Two and oh, okay, two and oh, sorry. Look, if you don't lose a game and you win all your games, you are the national champion. You are a champion. national champion. All right. Um, honestly though, man, I'm really I'm really excited to talk New Mexico State Aggie football. Well, I'll give you credit for it, but I will say this. There is a guy that is making this an interesting program. I wouldn't call myself excited for it, but I call myself interested. 
it, I'm very excited for it because I am a believer in what we got going in Las Cruces, New Mexico, because they went out and they hired the fixer, <laughs> the fixer for all programs. I mean, he he's turned around some programs before. His name is Jerry Kill. All right, a hundred fifty four and one hundred one as a head coach. Patty, see this guy. Do I need to go through what he's done? Let's just say uh, everywhere he's been, he's he's won. He's a he's a, a Gary Patterson's best man in his wedding. That's uh, a win. Saginaw State, Patty C. Uh, just thirty eight and fourteen. Okay. Emporia State. Let me ask you this. At What's Saginaw that? State, did he ever go backwards? Like he started six and four, seven and three, seven and three, nine and two, nine and two. Well, I guess we just gotta look up Saginaw State. Well, I'm looking at it right now. Doesn't look like he ever took a step backwards once he got there. That's right? what I'm talking about. He is the fixer because then he goes to Emporia State. Doesn't take a step backwards there. Yeah. And five hundred or better, yes. And then he goes to Southern Illinois. Hmm. Year one, one and eleven with the Salukis. Year two, four and eight. Year three, ten and two. Year four, ten and two. Year five, nine and four. Year six, nine and four. Year seven, twelve and two. He went to the FCS playoffs five straight years. Then he says, you know what? Northern Illinois needs some help. That program's kind of falling apart. Northern Illinois has, hires him six and seven in year one, goes to a bowl game, then seven and six. Then ten and three, and then if you know the year after he left, they went to what the BCS Bowl with Dave Doran. Dave Doran can can tip the hat to Jerry Kill for I a nice contract, so. I would say. Yeah. Then he goes to Minnesota. Minnesota had been in some some tough spots. Three and nine year one, then six and seven, then eight and five, then eight and five, then four and three. He had a health problem where Tracy Clay's took over. But aside Tracy, from yeah. that health problem at Saginaw State. His first season was his worst record there. His last season was his best record there. At Emporia State, his first season was his worst record there. His last season was his best. Southern Illinois, same thing. Northern Illinois, same thing. Minnesota, same thing up until his last season where he got sick. Dude, this is a what you would this He's is a good this coach. is like a flat out home run, buddy. This yeah. is a home run hire. Yeah. That they're doing in Las Cruces, guy, New Mexico. Probably one of the more slept on coaches. And let me tell you, buddy, I really believe there is a reason to be highly optimistic about the future of this program, including this football season. Let's hop into it because they were the 105th best team in scoring offense, which is not great considering there's only 130 FBS teams last year. They were 123rd in rush offense, 25th in pass offense. 89th in total offense. Doug Martin's gone though. He's gone. And guess what? They don't return much. They got three of five starters back on the O line though, led by right tackle Doro O'Mary. They get wide receivers, Terrell Warner and justice powers back. And that's it. That's it. Yeah. But the portal, the portal, the portal, the portal is where they friend. made their noise. Uh, How about his assistant, Tim Beck? Yes. Great recruiter. Good coach was won a himself a division yeah. two national championship as a head coach in 2011. Can coach some offense. Consistent I'm telling you, winner. Buddy, I'm telling you. He was over at TCU with them last year. I see a Kansas of this year going on Hello. in Las Cruces. Uh, yeah, and then on the defensive side of the ball, Nate Drilling. I think that's correct. Uh, look, he's got his work cut out for him because last year they were 128th in scoring defense, 112th in rush defense, 128th in pass defense, 127th in overall defense. But guess what? It wasn't his fault. He wasn't there. <laughs> well, I think he is still pretty new to the game. Only started coaching in 2015 in various, uh, I guess, avenues. So, I, so wait, what's he doing though? Well, he's running that three three five. He's defense. running that three three five. When Gary Patterson's your best man, you know what you do? You say, "Hey." Teach me. Yes. Let's take a page from old GP. There you go. Well, guess what? They have nine returning starters on defense, Patty C. Oh, wow. Nine. Their entire defensive line is back. Their entire linebacking core is back. And uh, the D line, by the way, Marcus Buckley, name to watch. Linebacking core, Trevor Brohard. Watch out Bro for him. Very hard. Three of five in the secondary back, led by cornerback Cyrus Dumas. 
And their kicker and punter are back, Patty C. Yowzers. Well, Jerry Kill was quoted saying, special teams is the easiest way to turn around a team that's been losing a lot and help them win some, you know, 50 50 games. Well, and it's not like a random coach just saying that. This is a guy that's done it so many times that I'm like, no, 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 no. He, if there's anyone probably in the country you should ask yeah. that can do this, it's him. Well, I mean, that, that gives a lot of cred to what you were saying before, you know, which is something that I don't think I acknowledged as a necessary thing for a coach to do, but I do think it, I'm starting to think like, Hey, uh, X factor is special teams. That's the difference. A lot of the time between a very good coach and a coach that's just average. And we're going to find out about these Aggies. I'm going to talk transfer portal. Cause let me tell you, it played a, it, sh- I should say it played a huge role in 2022. And we're going to talk recruiting rankings, Las Vegas expectations. Hopefully you're watching on YouTube. If you're watching on YouTube, you see the sweet graphic behind me, subscribe to the college football experience uh, on YouTube or wherever you listen to podcasts. And also remember subscribe to the college basketball experience because we talk college basketball year round in New Mexico state keeps a good Chris Jan's gone to Mississippi, Mississippi state. Don't worry the Greg, uh, what is it? Higher, higher. That's going to work out. And uh, Patty C, what if I told you New Mexico state's basketball program only has five losing seasons since 1966. That's that's what almost 60 years. That's that's like a blue blood right there. Yeah. Mid major blue blood. That's like one losing season every 12 years on average. Ask UConn fans how to work out for them last year when they played New Mexico state in the opening round of the tournament. Come on. Boom. They took that Hard L. L. Uh, but first, all right, I got to get us paid. And then we're going to talk on this stuff. All right, folks. want to tell you that the college football experience, New Mexico state Aggies almost said Lobos. Jeez. Episode is brought to you by win bet bet $50 at win bet. Get $200 in free bets, bet big, win bigger with win bet head over to sports gambling podcast.com slash win bet. That's sports gambling podcast.com slash W Y N N B E T to claim your free bets today. We're also brought to you by IP vanish. IP vanish is the official VPN of SGPN and they're offering 70% off. If you go to IP vanish.com slash SGP, once again, that's IP vanish.com slash SGP. We're also brought to you by SGPN discord. Make sure to check out our new discord server, the perfect place to interact and sweat out bets with the entire SGPN crew. Just go to sports gambling podcast.com slash discord. All right, Patty C we are back talking. Aggie football, Patty C the transfer portal. <laughs> you want to talk about, I think you can make a case considering what they had and what they brought in. I'm not talking about lining up this team against another team's transfer portals. Yeah. I'm talking about dominating the transfer portal. I think yeah. you can make a case. They did the best job in the country. Wow. Bold a statement. I, I want to dive in real quick and get their, their national rank in that. Well, their projected starting quarterback, Diego P- Pavia. Well, he only just won a Juco national championship. So big get for this program. Very nice in state guy. Yes. Committed to New Mexico state and uh, running backs. Well, let me see if they are returning uh, a decent running back with uh, Jamoni Jones, but uh, this stable just got really stout because former four star Amante Watkins from TCU making the journey with Jerry kill. Do I also need to alert you to former four star Omari Samuels from Michigan transfers in as well, man. Well, uh, of late, this team has been a little bit of uh, a DB and RBU. since 2000. They've had two running backs drafted and four defensive backs drafted. You bring in a four-star running back, Larry Rose, the third, uh, was that one of them? Yeah. Richard Huntley. Is that another one? Uh, or Huntley, J- Johnny Huntley, Richard Huntley. I got Larry Rose. The third was he, I don't know if he was drafted. I don't well, think he's he in was. the USFL. He okay. was in the XFL. He's a baller. There you go. Um, um but you bring in a four-star running back and a four-star defensive back. This is maybe like the, uh, the identity of this program. I can tell you this Jerry kill teams run the hell out of the football. Yeah. Uh, bringing back three on your offensive line, grabbing those running backs count on a good supply of body bags. If you know what I mean <laughs> for that defense, quoting that great first blood Rambo movie. There you um, go. Well, he went to the offensive line and got a guy that was somewhat sought after FCS transfer uh, Kane and Yarrow from Southern Utah with the Thunderbirds. And he also got Jeremiah Marlin from Iowa state, right? 
Then he goes out in the receiving port uh, in the portal and grabs a receiver that I think is projected to be a day one starter, Dominic DeSento from Missouri in the SEC. Patty C. Uh, then he goes out and gets a couple tight ends, tight end JJ Jones from Dartmouth nice. Ivy League. But this is the one I think keep an eye on: Thomas Whitford, a JUCO transfer, projected to be a starter. Well, there you go. You said uh, he's a um, uh, K State guy, d- uh, uh, Snyder. Bill yeah. Snyder, uh, so JUCO. That's two important players. What what position was the other? The quarterback was JUCO, and yeah, that uh, tight end, tight end, starting penciled in as a starting tight end. Taking uh, notes from the great Bill Snyder, who's turned around a few programs himself. Yeah. Um. So I'm not done. All right. Uh, he goes out and then lands uh defensive lineman Isaiah Reed from Murray State, the Racers. Bud Foster, Frank Beamer, you know, okay, yeah. Murray State. Um. Then the the corners here love these gets. Former four star Andre Seldon from Michigan, and Makai Miller who played at Miami Ohio. I'm like no, I'm not talking like as a reserve. This guy was a, was a key player on that te- on that defense. Then goes out and gets a fifth year senior, super senior grad transfer Chris Oja from Eastern Washington. I'm already hearing talk. This guy's going to get drafted. Patty C. I see a team that I think dominated the transfer portal. Now I will go through what they lost. I mean, for a team that's only won more than four games once since 2005, that's impressive for him to be able to get that many guys to come to Las Cruces. Uh, Well, quarterback Trevor Appleman is in the portal. Wide receiver Cole Harity went to the Buffalo bulls. Offensive lineman, Anthony Tocini is in the portal. Cornerback Antonio Oliver is in the portal. Uh, defensive end Michael Bow in the portal. Uh, they, this is what this one did hurt. Juwan Price, running back, he was good last year. He went to Syracuse. Mm. Uh, then you have uh, what? Price was good for 692 yards. Yeah, he's decent. Team leader in rushing. He's Qu- gone. Quarterback Jonah Johnson got some starts last year. He's gone. Hit the portal. 2,700 passing yeah. yards, 10 touchdowns. Eight interceptions. I'm sure they're fine getting rid of that, though. We just did our Nebraska preview. Their wide receiver Isaiah Garcia Castaneda. He went to Nebraska. Mm, 578 receiving yards. L- losing some production in the yeah. transfer portal. Athlete uh, Javier Clemmer in the portal. Cornerback Xavier Hinkle portal. Safety Devlin Kirkland in the portal. So that that that's what they lost. But still, I think they still destroyed it. When you bring in oh. three people that were four stars, yeah, pretty solid. 36th in the nation with only eight transfers and number one among uh, independents. That's above BYU, above Notre Dame. Watch out, buddy. Hello. Things uh, are changing in Las Cruces. What about recruiting over, uh, uh, like overall? You know, I know it's tough. Uh, well, as an independent, let me tell you what it has been tough, but uh, they made a nice little jump this year. Last five years, 125, 120, 127, 115. But get this, 89 this year. All the way up to 89, you know, their four year composite had been down at 151 for the 2021 season. They don't they haven't released it for 2022, but I imagine it's a lot higher based on that 89. See a tide turn. 89th ranked recruiting class and 36th ranked transfer class. Things are changing. Well, I can tell you what else is changing. Uh, this program and my opinion of it, uh, Nevada comes to Las Cruces week zero. Patty see Nevada got pretty destroyed in the portal. Uh, Ken Wilson coming in to Las Cruces, Aggie Memorial stadium, Patty C if Jerry kill they're is 12 I'm- and a half point dogs, New Mexico state is calling it bet it right now with the 12 and a half. Also take the money line. Give me New Mexico State to be one and L. Who took over at Nevada? I'm Ken Wilson. Ken Wilson. Never been a head coach before, but been uh, thirty years with the program or something like that. Okay. Uh, Kill. Yeah, he probably um, very used to taking over new programs and turning them around. Like we said, done it in a number of stops. That means you would think that they're gonna be a little more prepared for Week One than Nevada will. But Nevada is just so much better. Granted, they lost a lot of their talent. The game in Lex Cruces is big. I'm going to go Nevada though. Well, guess what? They get one game under their belt 
and they head to Huntington Park State or Huntington Bank Stadium in Minneapolis. This is a personal game, I think, for Jerry Kill. Built that Minnesota program up. They got rid of Tracy Clays. He was not fond of that. He made remarks about PJ Fleck. He did. And called him a me, me, me guy. New Mexico State one and one all time against the Gophers. And and they've wow. only and they've only played twice in the past decade. They stole one from the Gophers before. Can they do it again? <laughs> I don't think so. I think Minnesota, I don't think so either. Minnesota's got a good team, but it'd be interesting to see what he dials up. Thursday nighter. At thir- uh, then the very next week, they they hit three away games in a row from Minnesota to Texas to Wisconsin. It's crazy, all over the place. Um, they head to the Sun Bowl, one of the more beautiful stadiums, I think. Um, take on the UTEP Miners. This is the Battle of I ten right here, and uh, Patty C. This is a fifty fifty game to me. <laughs> this is they almost won this last year. What was the score? Oh, no, 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 no. Last year, I think they got their ass whipped by them. It they was lost thirty. New to Mexico. Three. New Mexico uh, played them close last year. Yeah, thirty four twenty five. Um, I have to go with. Uh, with UTEP here. I don't think they'll have closed the gap that fast. Um, I think it's going to be a game. So I got I'll, sitting I'll go. I'll go UTEP. Oh, and three, you got them at one and two. Uh, the numbers three, buddy. They got a long way to go in my book. Well, they go to camp Randall to jump around with the Badgers. All right. That should be another L I got them one and three. Then they hit the road. They lose all three of those. Right? Yeah. Although that UTEP game, I think is a 50, 50, right? They host Timmy Chang and the Hawaii Rainbow Warriors. Patty C. September twenty fourth. This a dub for New Mexico State. New uh, they coach split in Hawaii. Uh, Forty eight to thirty four. Did they play them twice? I think they did. They lost both forty one twenty one and forty eight thirty four. But they got a little closer the second time around. I do think Kill has way better chops than Timmy Chang at this point. <sighs> I'm all over. I'll this. say this between that and FIU. I got them getting one. I think they win both. That's that's reasonable. I think they win both, and I got them at because uh, Florida International is the next game. That's what Patty C is referring to. The airport coming to Aggie Memorial Stadium. I got them three and three to start the season before a bye week. Patty C. Yeah. And if you listen to our New Mexico Lobos preview, I called for an upset special because once again they are hosting the Lobos. Give me four and three for Jerry kill the over just cashed. And it's only October 15th. <laughs> Outrageous. I got him at one and six. Then they host the San Jose state Spartans. Watch out Sparty. Sparty only beat them by six last year Watch in out. San Jose. Watch out Sparty. Uh, I'm going to take Sparty to get the dub. I'll take Sparty as well. So I then got him at what? Uh, four and four, but that's homecoming. Maybe it means a little more that weekend four and four that they head to UMass. This is a winnable game. Long trip. I'll say this by this point in the season, I expect them to get to win number two and it could be here. This is Halloween. I think weekend. they have a better roster than UMass right now, but I do think this is going to be cold. It's probably gonna be cold up there. Who's the, uh, who's the better coach Don Brown or uh, kill Jerry kill kill considerably. I think so. But I, I still think it's a far trip. Give me UMass. Alrighty. I think I, but I'll be honest between UMass and UTEP. I think you can build a case where this team is bowling. All right. I got them at four, Yeah. four and five. Now they get a bye week They host the Lamar Cardinals. Patty see they're five and five. I got them beating Lamar for sure. Lamar was only two and nine in the FCS ranks last year. That, that pushes for me at three wins. You got them at five and five, five and five. And then they head to ferret field to take on the Missouri Tigers. Will Drinkowitz be coaching the Missouri Tigers on Saturday, November nineteenth? Could be an opportunity for Kill to get an upset here. I'm taking Missouri. I'm taking Missouri too. But I do think this one they could be a live dog because if things go south or if you freeze, they're speculating he's leaving for that Auburn job. Mm-hmm. I see an opportunity. Liberty lost to to ULM last year. Yep. If now his I, foot's out the door. Yes. I still took Liberty. If you listen to our episode, so I got him at five and seven. But the over smashed, and I think there's potential for a six or seven win season this year for New Mexico State. I mean, I want to look at something real quick. I want to look at Jerry Kill's first season at a number of places: Saginaw State six and four, Emporia State five and six, Southern Illinois one and ten, 
Northern Illinois six and seven, Minnesota three and nine. Did go two two and two in an interim role at TCU last year. I think it takes him a little bit to get the ball rolling. He is a builder. Um, three really seems possible. It, I, that schedule because they get so many of those at home and UTEP's only what like thirty minutes away. I feel like. Uh, I think they'll have like half the crowd at the UTEP game. Tell you what, you know what a big one is? What's that? That FIU game and FIU was only one and 11 last year. That's what I'm saying. And the fact they get Nevada, Hawaii, FIU and New Mexico at home and Lamar. I'm telling you this team, there is a path to go to a bowl. I think I agree with you. I think, I think they're going to get to three, but I think it's more likely they get to four than only get two. I got them at five and seven. I think they could go six and six, seven and five. Best case scenario, seven and five. Uh, most likely, I think five and seven. I could, I could totally see a six and six out there and go bowling. Boom! If if Kill did that in year one, get that statue going. Get that statue going. I cannot wait to watch this team every week. Remember, folks, college football—they're trying to destroy it from us. I challenge the the listener here, not the New Mexico State fan, because they're going to watch whatever New Mexico State plays, right? I challenge you guys out there listening. The Battle of I 10 has been a rivalry that's happened for a while. That happens on Saturday, September 10th. Do yourself a favor. Find yourself a TV to watch that game. It's on ESPN. Plus. Find a way to do that. Support, support your local college football rivalry. And when I say local, it doesn't necessarily have to mean you're living in Texas. Support a rivalry. Well, part of the things that make college football great is New Mexico State at UTEP, is New Mexico at New Mexico State. Stuff like that. All right. And if it's, and if you're not going to do New Mexico state, I challenge you to find your team, find whatever team is close to you. All right. But you don't need to, it doesn't have to be the big brand that you're thinking of. It doesn't have to be Ohio state, Michigan. We know that's a great rivalry. I'm not trying to throw shade at that rivalry. I'm just saying, make the, what makes college football special is much deeper than that. It is schools like this. Let's give these games the shine they deserve. Yeah, and that's what I'm saying. And and by us watching it, guess what that does? That that's that, that also deals a little fuck you back to the TV execs that are trying to ruin the sport. Yeah, we're gonna right? see Rams versus Giants in October or September anyway. We don't need to see USC playing Rutgers. Yes. You know? Do Let's, yourself a favor. If yeah. you can find it, whether it's whether it's I don't know, Memphis, Houston, whether it's uh Boise State and BYU, whether it's uh, you know, Yukon and UMass. I don't even care. The FCS has got a ton too. Montana, Montana state, North Dakota state, South Dakota state, any of those matchups, any of these, you know what I would like, yeah. I would like for our fans out there to kind of chime in and tell us what their biggest rivals are. I want to hear. I what had they someone today. Tell me, uh, let me, let me load it, it up. Middle but I, Tennessee. Middle and, Tennessee. Uh, was it Chattanooga? I think it was uh, Tennessee state, Tennessee or state? Tennessee tech. No, maybe te- I think Tennessee tech, middle Tennessee. Look, those are the things that make college football fantastic. Do yourself a favor this year. When 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 TV execs that probably never loved the sport are making calls, you know, changing the sport that we all love, we have to fight back, Patty C. So it starts with the New Mexico State Aggies. We're both on the over. Subscribe to the college football experience. We talk college football year round. Uh, subscribe on YouTube as well. And remember also subscribe to the college basketball experience. Cause we love talking Aggie basketball. What's um, up, yeah, so is it, you said battle of the I 10 yeah. was that's uh UTEP versus New Mexico state. UTEP versus New Mexico that's state. the one that I'm going to dial into this year. I, I know New Mexico, New Mexico state is a great rivalry, but I think the UTEP New Mexico state game has been more competitive. They're, they're both much, there in the desert. They're right, right there. Not right far from Mexico. Yeah. yeah, there we go. I've been down the, to, to both of those places. Fantastic <laughs> battle. The I 10 battle, the I 10 Saturday, September 10th. Let's do this damn thing. Folks. Uh, if you can, please give us a five-star review on iTunes. And if you do that, take a screenshot, find us on Twitter at TCE on SGPN. Show us that screenshot, or you can send it to my personal account at TC or at, I'm sorry at the Colby D. Uh, Patty C's on Twitter at Patty C831. NC Nick's on Twitter at NC underscore N I C K. Show us that screenshot. We'll send you a college football experience like that sweet pennant in the shot right now. If you're watching on YouTube, subscribe to that. All right. Also, subscribe to the Sports Gambling Podcast. I mean, we just had uh, Pat McAfee on the show, Mike Leach, uh, Bill Burr, always on the show. You got to check out that show. Uh, they're doing NFL futures already. So, if you're, like I said, if you're a Broncos fan, if you're a, a Cowboys fan, Texans fan, whatever. Check it out. I think you'll like it. Uh, nothing like the NFL. So check out that and uh, 
What else, Patty C? What else? Uh, the the golf gambling podcast, MMA gambling podcast. You go on and on. I feel and like on. the folks down in the desert enjoy some MMA yeah. and some golf. Yeah, MLB gambling podcast. Get the SGPN app. You'll have access to all that. But check out the Discord channel. Honestly, we talk to Mexico State football, basketball, whatever. All in there all the time. I'm already on that 12 and a half point line. That's going to be a great money line play too. Get on top Boom. of it, folks. All right, this is the college football experience, New Mexico State style. You better start thinking about yours. And we out of here. So